All right, so the next component of the uh, central contributions is general motorized programs. And these generalized motor programs are programs that are meant for a particular class of action. And, and if you think about um, all the different styles of throwing and catching you have, um, but they all are founded in, the, in a base uh, motor pattern, right? So the idea of that you are going to be sequencing um, a motor, few motor units in line and in series with each other, depending on um, how much force application of the timing. Um, but when we talk about GMPs, we're going to talk about a couple of things. Parameters, these define how the program must be executed. And the key component here is they provide these adjustments in the movement outcome, right? So it's that idea of if I'm going to swing a cricket bat versus a baseball bat versus a softball bat in slow pitch or fast pitch, these are all very similar in swings or even a golf swing. Um, but you have different components of it that are slightly different. And these are those adjustments or those parameters that you need to be executed. The same with playing volleyball. If I'm going to go up as an outside hitter and whether or not I have a blocker or the blocker is taking away the line versus taking away um, a cross shot or whether or not um, the ball is set too tight or too far away or just perfect. These are all different components of the parameters that must be adjusted to make the outcome. And then we have invariant features. And now a key component with invariant features are these are fixed features of the pattern, right? Um, so some things are very easily changeable when we talk about um, GMPs, but others are not. And these invariant features are things that are not very easily changeable. So one of the things we're going to talk about is um, the patterns of muscle contraction sent by these stimuli and the motor neurons are, are this impulse timing. Um, and for those of you that are taking um, biomechanics, should understand what the impulse is, and that's force times distance um, or force times time. Um, and so as we're going to do is we have this timing component here. Now, when we look at it, we're like, when is it turned on? The quantity of force and when is it turned off? So the force over time or multiplied by time is the idea of impulse. And you take a force time curve and you integrate that. As we go forward, this is what it looks like. And these are all different components of, of an impulse. And you can see you have the magnitude of force on um, the y-axis in time in milliseconds is on the x-axis. And to get the impulse, you basically take the area under the curve and that gives you the impulse force times time. So now as we look at um, these components of the GMPs that are the called considered the invariant features, right? So when we talk about impulse timing, um, we're going to talk about these invariant features. And so there's three components here. Um, and I want you to really kind of identify what the difference is between the invariant um, and those parameters that can be switched. But the invariant features are those of orders of events, right? So this is a sequencing of the muscle contraction. And it's really not controlled independently. We have an idea of um, when things need to be turned on and turned off. And, and so the idea comes into play is, as the more skilled you get, things are turned off and turned on better. Um, and then we have the idea of relative timing. And the key word here as we go forward is in the invariant features, you're going to see the term relative. And that means that there is a ratio at which we're talking about. Um, and so this is measured in duration of various yeah, elements within the that. sequence. And then you have the sequencing relative to the overall movement time. And so it's not the actual timing, but it's the relative. So how they are related to each other in, in the order of operations. And then you have this idea of relative force. And again, so if you look at this, right, time and force is the impulse. And they both have relative. So when we talk about the invariant features, we're really talking about the relative impulse. So invariant features of impulse timing are relevant, or relative, sorry, um, going forward. And so this relative force is the amount of force produced by any two muscles remain in a constant proportion. So again, there's that ratio component to it. So if one goes up, the other one goes up by a function of that ratio, not necessarily by an absolute magnitude. So again, now we talk about the um, non-fixed or the superficial and changeable, and those are the parameters of the general motorized program. If you look at this, you can see the difference. And so again, here we have the duration or timing and the force, and together, remember, those are the impulse. The difference now in this process is simply 
what we're putting in front of this. This is the overall. So this is actually another way of talking about the actual magnitude of the time and the magnitude of the force. So this is the difference between the parameters and variant features. Is the variant features are the relative, the parameters are that overall. So in the duration, it's do we speed up, speed down? What is the sequence? Now the sequencing does actually remain proportional, but the increase in accuracy and relative timing um, is, is able to increase and become more beneficial in practice. And so this is when the antagonist muscles are able to be turned off or turned on to allow for a more um, coordinated or a better movement pattern. And then here we have the, the, the actual strength of the relative muscles. So this is the magnitude of force being produced. Um, and so there is a little support to its separation of relative and absolute, but the idea is that the overall force and overall duration are changeable. Um, but again, if we go back, and the one other one that we add to the parameters is this bottom one. And this is muscle selection. And this is a very important determination because the parameters are actually what determine the muscle selection. And that's the sequencing, um, what specific muscles and joint parameters you can do. And, and one of the, the uh, common tests in, in studies is the idea of being able to write with your non-dominant hand or actually being able to write with your toes versus your arm. A lot of the features going back to that previous slide of the invariant features can be the same um, you can be able to read it out, but there will be some actual over, overall duration and force differences, but the timing, the relative timing and the relative force will be the same. And then muscle selection, of course, will be different, but the relationship will be the same. So another component of um, the GMPs is this idea of, can we just switch the parameter as a paradigm needs to be changed? And we think about this when, when the task is either causing us to speed up or slow down versus do we need to completely reverse the direction of our movement pattern? Um, and this also goes to a little bit of the lines of that baseball paper we had. Um, but the idea is that if we need to select a program and a parameter selection, whether or not the speed in, or force needs to slow up plus the program, um, whether or not we're doing a um, lob versus kind of a forehand um, or, or serve um, in different sports, or if we're just trying to speed up or slow down, the idea is that from if I need to change the program, so I need to completely switch the program of what I've been doing because the, the task is going to be different. It takes longer because we have to reverse that program and initiate another one versus just a program selection. And, and the idea is through some re, um, reaction time tasks, this has been shown um, to be the case. And the parameter selection is much faster if I just have to change the amount of force or the timing of it to speed up or slow down. So a big idea, though, is that so the GMP theory um, has been on, on really on the market now for about 40 years, and there's been a number of studies that have supported it. Um, in the, but there are also some contentious issues with it, and the major one is this idea of statistical invariance, and and it, invariance really deals with the relative timing. And if we take some of the tasks that have been created in writing and, and those kind of ideas. The relative timing for each of the individual words or, or letters within a word may be a little bit different. And so the question becomes, um, can we have something that where the data is perfectly invariant and where does the data fall along the statistical line for the deviation across it to be meaningful? Because if there was limited or zero or perfectly invariant, then all the data points, so all the relative timing would fall along the line if we put a line in between the data, right? But but we know that's just not the case. There's some things that are gonna fall to the left and right because instead in stats, we know that the mean things fall left and right at 50%. Um, so what is the appropriateness of that null hypothesis? And in what level do we cut off in the point of rejection? Is that, and a lot of times this is kind of arbitrary. Um, but so this is really where um, we come up to the idea where people are um, kind of assessing the relative invariance of these data sets that are used to support GMPs. And most of it comes from the relative timing. And then there's also the idea of peripheral invariance um, that people tend to see a lot and, and argue for. Um, just understand that over the last four years, most of the literature out there supports the idea of GMPs or generalized motor programs, but there are, as with everything, because it's a theory, 
um, some contradictions or some um, areas of contention. 